So now that this YouTube side hobby has turned into a really tiny business where there's some income generated from ads or spending like on camera equipment and music licensing, it's about time I have a dedicated card to put all that spend on. But that said, you don't need a formal business to get a business credit card. I for one will be signing up as a sole proprietorship, which you probably can too if you have any type of business from mowing lawns, to flipping items on eBay, or even if you have an intention to start up some type of side business. Now, there are a lot of cards to consider, and I went over the top seven to do so in the video up above, but I settled on the Chase Inc. Unlimited for a few reasons. One, I knew Chase and American Express points are two of the most valuable in the entire credit card game. So I knew I wanted a card from one of those two ecosystems. But two, American Express cards are once in a lifetime and had much higher signup bonus targets like $15,000 on a card like the Amex Business Platinum, whereas on the Inc Unlimited, it's only $7,500. It's also a great time right now because the three months takes us through holidays like Black Friday and Christmas and Boxing Day, where there'll probably be a lot of sales. And three, the Chase Inc Unlimited has no annual fees and completes the other Chase Trifecta. So the original Chase Trifecta consists of first the Chase Sapphire Preferred card, which I've had for over four years now, giving me elevated spend for categories like travel, dining, and online groceries, along with a small hotel credit, as well as letting me redeem points for 25% more value through travel or pay yourself back. But more importantly, this card allows me to pull my points together and then transfer them to travel partners to redeem my points for values upwards of two cents per point. Then the second card in the trifecta is the Chase Freedom Flex card that gives me 5% back in rotating broad categories where in this quarter includes Walmart and PayPal. And lastly, the Chase Freedom Unlimited, which I don't have, that gives you 1.5 times back on all of your spend. So because I don't have that card, this Chase Inc. Unlimited is perfect because it also has 1.5 times back on all of your spend and has no annual fees as well. Now, before I go ahead and complete the application, I wanna lay the foundation of where I'm coming from in terms of my credit status. Right now, I have five credit cards where two of them are from Chase, which includes the Chase Sapphire Preferred that I got back in September of 2017 and the Freedom Flex that I got back in January of 2021. Then there's the 524 rule, saying that you won't be approved for any new Chase cards if you signed up for more than five new cards in the last 24 months. But once you are approved for a business card, it does not count towards the 524. Thankfully, I'm sitting at 224 right now, so two cards in the last 24 months, so I'm well below that limit. Technically, that means I can apply for Chase personal cards, but there are no cards out there right now that really interest me, and the ones that do don't have high sign-up bonuses. I also have a credit score around the 780 to 800 level with 100% on-time payments and an under 5% credit utilization ratio. Cool, so with all that said, let's hop on to my computer and go over the card and the application. So here we're on the Chase Inc. Business Unlimited cards page where first off you can see the $750 bonus cashback would hit the minimum spend of $7,500 in the first three months which is actually okay. It's much higher than the personal card on the Chase Freedom Unlimited where you only need to spend $500 but it's also much lower like half compared to a card like a Business Platinum that needs $15,000 in spend in three months. And for some ways to hit the spend, if you're making content like this, you could be getting cameras, lens, recording equipment, building a set, and so much more. Especially with holidays around the corner with all the sales, it's gonna be pretty easy to put spend on the cart. Next, because this cash back is given in points, instead of $750, you're actually getting 75,000 points instead which then can be combined with your personal cards like the Chase Sapphire Preferred and give you even more value for your points, like getting 25% more value when you're redeeming for travel or through the Pay Yourself Back portal. Or combine your points then transferring over to travel partners and redeeming it that way through places like 
Virgin Atlantic or World of Higher. Then when we go back to the page, we can see an unlimited 1.5% cash back here. So 1.5 times points on all of your spend, which is the same as the 1.5% cash back on the personal Freedom Unlimited card. Then there's also a 0% intro APR for 12 months, although I don't personally plan on using that. And of course, the $0 annual fee. And similar to some of the Sapphire cards actually, if you scroll down, you can see that there's also other types of travel and purchase coverages like primary rental car coverage, which could save you $20, $30 every time you rent a car per day to travel and emergency assistance, roadside dispatch, purchase protection, and extended warranty. It's not that much. And because I already have the Chase Sapphire preferred card, that already comes with all these types of coverages. It's not anything new for my card setup. All right, so that said, let's jump right back to the page and then apply as guest. That loads. Cool. So this is the page you land on when you want to apply for the card. Um, first, they'll ask you for your personal info because you're still like an individual person applying for it. So they want to know who you are. And then after, ask you for more of your business info down below. So if you start from the top, Personally, I am the owner of the company because I'm applying as a sole prop for this company. Type in my first name, last name, suffix, optional if you have any here, as well as an optional middle name if you want it to show up on your card. Then there's the date of birth and mother's maiden name, which I'll go back and fill out after I go through the form. Then of course, there's your tax ID number, which if you have a business and have registered for an EIN number, you'd go in and enter that here. But for me, again, I'm a sole prop, so I'll be applying as an individual using my SSN number. I'll also go back and fill this out later. Then you have your address, so domestic or military, and this is your personal address here. Scroll down more, it'll ask for your total gross annual income. Again, personal income, so add that here. If we scroll down further, this is where it asks you for your business info. So for the legal business structure, in my case, I'm a sole prop, where my business legal name is myself, and the desired business name on the card I'll have as myself as well. Does your business use another name, like a trade name or doing business as? Personally, no. And again, the tax ID number here, I'll be using my social security number as I'm a sole prop. Next up, it'll ask if your business's physical address is the same as your personal. If it's not, then you'll have to go in and put in the address of your business. Personally, it is, so I'm just gonna put yes here. Number of employees, it's just me. So here I'm putting zero. And then a business phone number, which I will go back and fill this out, as well as some other details like when your business was established and your annual business revenue, which can technically be some sort of projection if the year hasn't finished yet. Then if we go down, there's a business category. Here I'll try to find the most accurate one I can see that relates to this YouTube business, probably information, other information and internet publishing sounds pretty good. There's nothing to add for the NAICS code. It's just pre-filled based on the categories you selected. And then an estimated monthly spend on your business. So maybe you're usually buying cameras, recording equipment, monthly subscriptions for music and licensing. Just sum that up and give an estimate for how much on average you'll have every month. And then if you have employees or want any employee cards, you can mark yes or no here. And finally, of course, the pricing and terms. Um, definitely scroll through this to read through to see what you're agreeing to um, before you go through your certifications. Clicking I've agreed and then going to submit. So here I'm going to take a pause. I'm going to go back and fill out all the more sensitive information and then scroll down back here and press submit. Cool. So I went back up and filled out all the information. Coming back down here, checking the box and hitting submit. Cool. So it looks like I'm instantly approved for a $6,000 credit line with a purchase APR. And then it'll ask me to set up my Chase Business Online account because technically the business ones are separate from the personal and then going through this and agreeing and continue. So again, let me fill this out and I'll be right back. Cool, so I filled it out. 
scroll down, press continue. Not save my password, and then we're good. Approve, you're all set, explore your account now. I should be able to get my card in the next three to five days, and that's all for here. All right, so if you're approved, then you just have to sign up for the account and wait for your card to come. But if you don't immediately get approved, don't panic because there could just be some simple mistakes on the application. Sometimes just not enough credit history. Maybe they need more verification from you. Or sometimes you need to move credit around between your cards because they've already extended too much credit line to you. But with all that said, depending on the response, you can try calling the reconsideration line either for the personal cards or the business cards and then go through the flow to see what they need from you. All right, so now that I'm getting my card, I can finally burn down the list of items I wanna buy to upgrade my setup. Maybe some softer lights, finally getting the upgraded version of DaVinci Resolve for editing, and maybe even a new camera and lens. And if I do end up finding a lot of deals on all of these items, it should put me pretty close to the $7,500 minimum spend to get the 75,000 points. Given the minimum spend target, this will probably be my go-to card for all of my business spend for the foreseeable future. But because I'm still well below 524, I'll probably look to get another card in the next three to six months. So if you're also looking to get a new card, check out this video for the top cards to consider here in 2022. See you over there.